So this is fairly rare. Uh, I'm actually uploading a loss and it's not because I'm always trying to upload wins. It just so happens that usually whenever I lose, it's because I'm not playing very well or some other reason or whatever. And they're not all that interesting, but this one is very interesting. So I'm playing up a guy, uh, playing up a guy who is obviously pretty good. Uh, even though he doesn't show through his portrait, I wouldn't be surprised if he was like, a. have been going up against a lot of people with like, you know, the special borders. That means they're like top 1000 and all that. And this guy doesn't have that, but I'm pretty sure he deserves it because he played so well. Or maybe I just played terribly. Who knows? Uh, so this is a relatively unusual tactic that he's using. So he's going first, but he's going to pass. Unusual. Usually you would only see that against uh, like super control decks like Radovid. Uh, if you're playing something, or just in general, just against Radovid, because Radovid excels at going second, and they can, uh, they they're allowed to be flexible, and respond, and go play low tempo, and still put a lot of pressure on the opponent, and they can, you know, have all kinds of ways to just react. Uh, I don't particularly have that. Maybe he thought I did, but in general, he just wants to go. Second, I think it's just the whole deal, right? He wants to go into second round. He wants to be able to play out his weather. Uh, or, that's kind of like the tricky thing. Like, So a very common tactic that I use against Aridin specifically, against uh, Ari Frost Aridin, is that I try and draw out as much as their weather over the course of three rounds. I'm thinking he is keenly aware of this, and he is totally okay not being in control of round two, just so that he has more opportunities to play his weather and not have it just get uh, cleared, basically. Because uh, keep in mind, passing is effectively a clear, so long as you don't lose the game. So it's it's like it's so weird to see the strategy into effect because it makes so much sense. It's it can be really harshly punished if you do have uh, abundant weather clear, but I very much do not. I have a single first light and none of the single single row weather clear. Although I'm kind of thinking about taking at least one. But then again, I don't even have medics in this deck. So I don't know if I can even fit in one. Especially, like, if I don't want to go over to 27 cards. But anyway, so uh, I don't, I'm not even sure, like, if he had gone first, if, he's, if he still would have... No, nah, if, if he went second, he totally would have played out the round. But since he's going first, he's going to allow me to take the round, and then we go into round two and three, where he has a, a lot of weather that I need to deal with. And draw out of him as much as possible. And I actually, it, I may have made a mistake. Uh, not in this play, but in the second play. In the second round. Uh, it's so, like, it's just, it's so weird to see the strategy into, uh, like, being used. Because I think it's kind of inherently risky. Um, but I think he used it to a very, very nice effect. I think it, you can only really use that tactic either against, like, a very heavy control Radovid. Or uh, if you're playing a deck like Frost Aridin, I think it w works in very few other situations, at least off the top of my head, from what I've seen. All right, so I'm I'm a little bit, you know, I'm a little bit like scared here, right? Because I, <laughs> because I'm, I have a bad feeling that he's going to just annihilate me with weather. And I'm and I think this is where I made the mistake too. I think in general, what I should have done is that I should have. Played out this round as long as I possibly could have, and then go to round three with something like Yakim, or uh, yeah, just kind of like with Yakim or something like that, and just kind of like take the weather as it is, even if I am hemorrhaging like two to six points a turn. Because remember, it doesn't matter how much you lose round two by. I'm kind of surprised I played Impair Brigade first there. I might have actually played. Maybe I should have played the Enforcer first. So he plays out a second Frost. I play at my uh, Enforcer by this point, I believe. I guess it kind of makes sense because when I play Brigade first and then I play Enforcer, then I can just play all my Spies. So he does that. He halves it and then it kills it with Frost. Very unfortunate. Like this strategy, like his Frost and uh, Drowners are so effective against my cards. Because it almost insta kills him. And I need these cards to stay alive so I can get value out of them over time. So he plays his spy. It's really unlucky for me. And I think this is where I make the mistake. Like, this is like, he's playing this, like, I feel like he's playing this so perfectly. Uh, so he kept a spy in his hand, even though he's going into round two and lost round one, because he knows he's going to be in this situation in which uh, he's going to be ahead on points. 
and then he needs to be able to slow the round down with the spy. So and he's still getting value off the spy, like at its worst, because it's gonna get tick it's gonna hit get it's gonna get hit by the weather, or it's going to move a unit into the weather, both of which are very good options. Uh and I only got two I only got two uh two weathers out of him, or two <laughs> two weathers, two frosts out of him, which is not good enough, I don't think. Uh so I passed because I feel like it's a good opportunity. It's twenty two to twenty three points. He has to play at least one card, and we go into round three, same cards. If he had not played a spy, we'd probably be going into round three. Um, actually, since he played a spy, he kind of forced himself to play one of a card. But anyway. So I think this is kind of where my mistake lies. I should have kept playing out this round. Uh, even, if it did, even if it didn't mean that I was going to lose value. I was thinking I'd be able to play around the weather in the next round by pulling into a first slide or something. But that's not really what happens. I think what's also really unfortunate is just how much weather he had. Ah, but it makes me feel so like inadequate because he's playing really well. Maybe like I still am not good enough to tell whether or not I'm playing poorly or someone's playing really well. But he's his play definitely uh, impressed me as better than better, much better than average. Just like the use of like passing on turn one, which is one not a very common tactic or know how, uh, and very directly opposes like common knowledge. And then two, using the spy in the way that he did, even if he did have to go one card down. I mean, even if he had to play one card over. It was a little bit unlucky, but I still think it's pretty good. So this is kind of an interesting predicament for me. Uh, I know he doesn't have a whole lot of big units to to play out, so I could play Witcher just to shut the the bear down. I think I ended up going with Infiltrator just to ta toggle the spine tag and then hope to draw into Nausicaa Brigade. Or I do Cynthia first, I guess. Yeah, I don't think it. Uh, I don't feel like there's any really reason to do that though. Maybe I was just trying to get the golem out of the deck. Yeah, and then he plays out a freaking woodland spirit, which uh, is so annoying because it's so much tempo. He's even playing the harpies, the harpy hatchlings, or whatever they're called. A toggle the spine tag. Should have done this toggle the spine tag first. I don't think there's really much of a reason to do Cynthia except to get golems out. Ah, uh, but I feel like that does make a lot of sense, though. I don't know. And I'm playing these on the same row, so that if he does play another weather, he, he doesn't get immediate value. If he had to play uh, a Drowner as well or something. So talk about the Spine Tag on it again. That's something, a very common strategy that I've used as well, as you've seen in a previous video, using the, the Caretaker or Undertaker or whatever it is to revive your opponent's civil trader to toggle Spine Tags. It's not looking too good for me here. Even with this like super high Yakin play, I'm still uh, just barely above him. And being just barely above him is not good enough because he's going to play more weather. And it wouldn't surprise me if he also had something like a um, uh, Mario Tailstorm. So that's another weather. I'm pretty sure I'm looking, I'm just about to get start digging for a first light. But I need to clear out my hand as much. I'm trying to thin out. Oh, this is very important. I'm trying to thin out my deck as much as possible by playing these emissaries and pulling bronzes out of my deck. So whenever I do eventually go for the uh, John Calvate, it'll be a much better John Calvate because there won't be as many bronzes in the way. And instead, I'll be able to draw in my into potentially gold and silvers instead or first light. So again, I go ahead and start hitting the bear because I'm just going to go ahead and kill it with my enforcer. <clears throat> he drowners it to the back row, kills it immediately, unfortunately. It's so un like, like, come on, like he's, he's saving his drowners for whenever I play my enforcers. And then he's keeping a row open so that he can eventually drag it back and kill it. Oh, man, it's so sad. So sad for me. <clears throat> because it's such a good play he's uh, annihilating like my my whole like a, a lot of my value with this guy and then he just effectively kills it again next turn i believe i don't remember exactly he gets a additional value on that on his uh his gold unit to hit the enforcer just uh just so he can kill it instead of hitting one of the units underneath the frost later so I go ahead and I kill my brigade, and like I've mentioned before, I believe uh, I'm not killing the spies just so I can get this impaired brigade value. 
And he plays this this freaking like Idris or whatever it is. What's her name? I don't know. I, anyway, he like he got me, man. He got me. I've been playing up against a lot of people who've surprisingly been playing this card, and it's surprisingly effective. I actually played uh, a Northern Realms deck played against me like in this like a, a game previous to this, uh, and then I was like, Haha, I'm so clever. I'm gonna put it back in my deck with Az Azir because uh, it's a spy, right? So uh, I put it back in my deck with Azir, and I was able to junk calvate the Iris out and put it on the opposite side, right? And the freaking Northern Realms deck with two cards left uses their silver lock card to shut it down and I lose the game. It was so sad. Yeah, the only way to deal with this card is like to somehow buff it way out of their range, or to... Why am I not playing this in my deck? Wait, wait a second, why am I not playing Iris in the Spying deck? I have so many ways to deal with spying cards. What the hell? Why don't I play that? What like what silver card is like? I guess the silver cards are pretty competitive, but why don't I just take out? Uh, I don't know. That's something I really need to think about. Like this, I this card is really good because I have both enforcers and I have Nazca brigades that can kill it, and that's twenty five strength right there. That's insane. And if I kill with Nazca brigade. Uh, I'm not only taking away the three strength, but I'm also bu buffing myself as well. So it's like a double, double bonus. Or I'm not really losing anything by playing Iris on the opposite side. Oh, that's so good. Though. And I, I, I relatively reliably have some cards out in the field like I do now. I need, I, I need to investigate that because that seems crazy powerful in the right situation. And not many people are running locked right now, so it makes it even more powerful. So right now I'm kind of I'm banking on the single fact that. Maybe he doesn't have any other way to deal damage. And uh, if I can just pull into first light. So I'll play Kahir here first. It's unfortunate that Roach is still in my deck. Play Kahir here first. And then very luckily first light. If Roach was not in there, I'd have another additional option. Which is why it's so important to get things like Imperagolum, uh, Roach, and the Bronze out of your deck first. Okay, But I was able to draw into first light luckily by using Kahir. here. First light. So I'm just 100% banking on the fact that he does not have another way to deal damage to this. Uh, that's a relatively low low EV play in general because I didn't pull out Rain Farm. I don't even know if Rain Farm would have been good there, but uh, but in general, that's not a very good play because he probably has another weather, and also the weather isn't taking all that much per turn on this, this middle row, especially towards the end here. So it's kind of a bad play. But it's the play that I felt that I had to make to win. And he had a freaking uh, White Frost. Uh, and he gets 25 points. So annoying. And also, I don't really, like, again, I don't have any infiltrators left, so I can't even hit this. Uh, in addition, he doesn't really have that many big units. Even if I did Menno this 14th strength, that's not all that much. That's not as much as Menno usually gets. Or can get, whatever. Yeah, and he still had plenty of uh, options to kill it with. Uh. It may have been better actually for him just to white frost this row in this row. So maybe he made a bit of a mistake. White frost the melee and the range and then use this guy to hit the back row. Because I don't have any options to buff it with anyway. And also since he buffed so many, uh, so many of his units, I don't really have much of an option to kill with the Witcher anyway. So I can just go ahead and forfeit because I know there's no way for me to win by this point. And also Roach freaking went on the last row like a little punk. Alright, so that was it. That's a, I lost, but it was a pretty interesting game. Uh, he definitely got me, man. He got me so bad. He he passed in the first round, forcing us to go to the second round and the third round only, which allowed him to play out more of his weather and not have and not allow me to have answers for it. Because keep in mind, uh, something that Swim actually is, has said, and I kind of really like, is that every player effectively has a has a, a first light in their hand by using the pass mechanic. But by passing first in the first round, which is a little bit convenient for him, because he might have wanted to pass. He, he would much less want to pass in the second round, but anyway. Um, but that has its own set of, like, it goes off on its own set of, like, decision-making. His own pra pra branch of decision-making. Uh, but effectively, he took away a first light away from me by passing the first round, which means that I had to play out rounds two and three without with only one of those first lights and one of the first lights in my deck, of which I was not able to really get all that much value out. Granted, he wasn't able to get all that much value out of his weather either. 
but he just had a whole lot more raw power. He shut down my player enforcer with his drowners. That's pretty much the only reason you really even needed frost. Just have an open row to put a drowner on and then bring it to that row and kill it. Or it didn't need to be an empty row, but. Ah, uh, man, it was it was a tough loss, but it was interesting because I know this player was really good. He really played. He played me so damn well. Uh, <laughs> you played me, you played his deck well. It was interesting. A heavy loss, but a fun one. Thanks for watching.